the 99% retire poor because of this simple fact, this very simple fact. This is an incredibly important missive today, and I, I plead you to please go through this, put it on 2x speed and go through this because this is why most people won't get ahead. This is why most people retire poor. This is why most people have too much month at the end of their money. This is why most people are getting divorced because of money issues. This is why most people don't get politics. This is why there's polarization, division, hatred among the people of the world because they do not understand this simple fact. So please allow me to take a few minutes to go through this and, and walk you through exactly what this is. This is literally my study over the last 20 years, studying politics, that side, and then the last 12 years, studying money, studying business and investing and understanding truly what is money, the definition of what is money and what is wealth and what does it mean. And because of this, this causes so much strife. This causes so much loss of freedom and liberty for some perceived security in life because people do not understand this fact. Are you making this massive money mistake? What's going on? It's Brandon here. I appreciate you coming to my TED Talk. Please share any signal you find, any signal, because the algorithm hates truth. We know that to be certain. We have the Twitter files. We have everything we know and have confirmed uh, now over the last year or two that we've known for years, for decades, that the media is there to peddle the government's talking points and narratives. So we have to take it upon ourselves to right the ship and help each other and build community, which is the number one thing in any survival situation. So let's jump right into this. The 99% don't know and won't get ahead. If you can't stand politics, bridges to nowhere, racial polarization, division, hate, looting, and all the moral decay in society, then you are in luck, my friend. We finally have a solution where you cannot be racketeered by governments anymore through inflation and stealth taxes. And this is one of my favorite memes. Truly one of my favorite memes. You have to understand that they have you, which I'll tell you in a second who that is, they have you fighting a culture war to stop you from fighting a class war. And what this means in plain terms is that the fight isn't red versus blue. It's not Democrat versus Republican. It's not man versus woman. It's not black versus white. It's the state versus you, right? It's not red versus blue. It's the state versus you. So I believe Nico Moran, uh, I took that from him. So hat tip to him. Uh, the red, it's not red versus blue. It's the state versus you. And it's, it's so apropos. And I remember finding this meme just really hit me. And once you understand money, if you look at politics just through the prism of politics and logic, you'll never get anywhere. Uh, it's really mainly emotion-based and it's money. You have to understand money to truly understand politics and understand what's actually going on. If you understand money though and how to make money and how money works, you'll never have to worry about politics again though in your life. Uh, that's the ironic part. So it really will be of no consequence to you politics because politics are where people go to serve or they go to get things from the government dole. They go to serve to go enrich themselves and they go to try to vote in their own wealth. So either way, people go to politics looking for this answer, looking for religion in a way, looking for meaning and looking for wealth. And it couldn't be more opposite. And we have the Bible for crying out loud to tell us that, right? Mm -hmm. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. We no longer have to live in a world where your wealth is extracted without your consent and used for propaganda to divide and conquer us. Think about that. We no longer have to live in a world where we must use and pay taxes in a currency that another person can counterfeit into existence. The average person cannot get ahead because they are saving liabilities they think are assets. Period. That's it. Read that again. The average person cannot get ahead because they are saving liabilities they think are assets. So let's look at this again. We no longer have to live in this world. So what is out there now? What is out there? that gives us this life raft away from this fiat legacy inflationary monetary system. What parallel system is being built right now that is completely opposite of this, that gives us wealth and cheap and abundant energy and savings and purchasing power, the opposite of inflationary system? Where is that? And again, we no longer have to live in this world. They use your wealth, your time and energy to extract that from you without your consent to pour it into hashtags and end zones and Bud Light campaigns, public private, private partnerships, government in bed with companies to pour the propaganda all over you, everywhere you look and turn, your children in schools, sports, your entertainment, your, your hobbies, whatever it is, everywhere you look, you're, you're rammed in the face mm -hmm. by propaganda. 
by psychological operations, by psyops. Why is that? Why is that? It's the money, stupid. <laughs> to put it simply, and this is what we're going to break down. This is what we're talking about. Dollars, or all fiat currencies, continue to lose value because the governments continue to print more of it, which devalues each dollar in existence. This is a liability. It's a losing value. It's a liability. An asset puts money into your pocket every month. An asset puts money in your pocket every month. So dollars or all fiat currencies lose value every month. You know, not totally the same, not throwing off cash flow either way, but it's losing value. So we know it's a liability on our balance sheet. It's a liability in your balance sheet as each Federal Reserve note, which is what they are, they're Federal Reserve notes, it's not money, it's debt, is owed back to the central bank with interest. And again, we're going to explain what money, the difference between money and currency in a minute too, which is so important. Again, there's a few things in here. If you understand these things, your whole life changes. Dollars and all fiat are debt instruments backed by nothing but confidence. The root word of con is of confidence is con, right? Con game. So it's a confidence game. Therefore, the 99% hold and save a liability they think is an asset and then wonder why they cannot get ahead. Wonder why they can't retire. Wonder why they can't afford their bills each month. Wonder why they have to feel the need to stay in a job they can't stand because of the paycheck. Or wonder why they feel they, they're going against their morals by voting for someone they despise because they think they're going to get something from that. This is the dystopia we live in right now because no one understands money. And why do you think that is? Why do you think government-run schools don't teach us about money? Literally, and I'm not talking about like how to be Jeff Bezos and, and run a company. I'm talking about just money itself. What is money? The definition of money. Again, here's gold backing the dollar from 100 years ago. Our money, or our money, it was money then. It wasn't a current, well, it, is, it was a currency, but it's also money as a store of value, actually backed by value, actually backed by gold. These dollar bills are just claim checks. They're just notes. They're just pieces of paper. They don't mean anything. This is real, right? Gold for thousands of years is real. And this is a claim check. This was a claim check to get your real money. Think about that. They delinked it. They decoupled it 50 years ago, the Nixon shock in 71. So now there's nothing tethering us to reality. These are just claim checks they can print into oblivion. Think about that. It's like holding a Babe Ruth card. You have one card. It's the only rookie card in existence. And then Upper Deck comes to you and says, we're going to print a trillion more. And you're like, what are you talking about? This just... You just crush the value of, of the only card in existence. Yep, sorry. That's your dollar. If you have the only dollar in existence and then the government comes and prints a trillion more of them, what happens to the value of your dollar? <laughs> you lose all the value of it. It's the same exact concept. And again, just to put it in simpler terms, again, just like a shirt, if you go to a dry cleaner, this is the real thing. This is just a claim check. The piece of paper is just a claim check. The piece of paper is not a shirt. I can't put in a shirt on. Mm. Just like this dollar is nothing. I, I can't do anything with a piece of paper. And I'm being, I'm, I'm taking this to the logical conclusion. Again, people argue with me all the time. Well, what do you mean? The dollar is backed by the military. You can actually change that currency. But you're not understanding the point. Think about what we are saying. When you start understanding this, the psychology of everything changes. Your entire life changes. Everything changes. How you vote, how you act, how you walk, how you talk, how you feed yourself your passions, your job, everything changes. Your wealth is your time and energy. Here's such an important point here that really my life is centered around this, helping people understand this. Your wealth is your time and energy. Your value creation and productivity is where wealth comes from. Government doesn't create value. Humans do, right? So money, therefore, comes from humans, in essence. Money is a container, though. It's a tool. It's a container for your wealth that humans create which is your economic time and energy, right? Currency is issued by fiat, by decree, and has no value other than the confidence someone believes that it has. So again, this is, is a currency, right? Pretend it's not backed by gold, which it's not now, or this, it's not backed by anything. But the government just says, hey, you need to pay taxes on that, we'll put you in jail. That doesn't give it value. That's not actually valuable because my rights and how I live my life don't come from government. They come from God. They've come from above. Government is an abstraction. It's, it's a construct. We give it power. They work at the consent of us. That's the beauty of America and the founding documents. They work at the consent of us. And we have it twisted. We got it backwards. Government thinks that we work for them. And that is opposite of how life works. We're not put here on earth to work for governments. Governments were instituted among men to work for us, for the people. We choose to let the government to take 
currency issue. We we choose to let them do that. Every day we choose, and every time we let the dollar fiat system, I should say that fiat system run, we are choosing every day to let them take the currency issuance away from us and steal our time and energy through inflation and printing of a currency, the debasement. This allows for inflation and more government control every second of every day. Inflation is the expansion of the currency supply. That's it. Don't let people tell you it's wages and these absolute goons out here have no idea other than they have an agenda. Inflation is the expansion of the currency supply. Everything else is a symptom. So people talk about logistics and, and wages and the wages haven't caught up. Those are symptoms of an inflationary and inflating currency supply. Those are downstream effects. Those aren't the reasons we have inflation. Those are just symptoms of why we have inflation. If we weren't expanding the currency supply, those issues would be very minor and minute and would fix themselves very easily, very quickly. So we choose, we choose to store our wealth, our finite time and energy. So here's one of the big things right here. Finite time and energy. We never get more of it inside of a container with a hole in it. So we choose, as the picture shows, to store our finite time and energy in a container, our work, every day we spend away from family and friends, we choose to spend it or put it in a container, a tool, a currency that has a hole in it. All the fiat currencies, dollar, peso, yen, boulevard, real, everything. Instead, we could choose to save our finite time and energy in a perfectly sealed finite bucket. Alas, we have our answer, Bitcoin. Gold and silver were the best thing we had for thousands of years. Now we have fire. We've invented or discovered fire. We've discovered the wheel. We've discovered the the perfection of money. And you know, I I I, I don't say that lightly. Uh, nothing in life is 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 perfect, but it is beyond anything we've ever discovered in our life. The finite, 21 million, the finite container for our finite time and energy. That's why we always say in our videos, Bitcoin is time and time is Bitcoin. They work hand to hand together. It's a beautiful symbiotic relationship. Nothing we've ever seen before and humans have ever seen before. So make that trade like an investor. You are, you are the lead investor for your time and energy of your life. Where are you going to store it? And the reason people can't get ahead is they're constantly putting all that time and energy in this government fiat inflationary bucket with a hole in it. Instead, we want a deflationary money. And people say, well, it's disinflationary. There's an inflation rate that goes down over time to zero. It's actually deflationary because we will lose Bitcoin over time. People will lose their Satoshis, the divisible use of Bitcoin. They will lose their Satoshis over time. So we will actually have less and less over time, meaning what is remaining, the quadrillion or two quadrillion Satoshis that are remaining increase in purchasing power, meaning they'll buy more things. And you can divide it even more, but there'll never be more than 21 million Bitcoin or 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis. So the purchasing power just grows. It just gets bigger and bigger. Your one Bitcoin or your one Satoshi or 100,000 Satoshis will just buy you more and more stuff. It'll buy you one Snickers bar and then it'll buy you 10 or then it'll buy you a thousand Snickers bars. So it'll just continue to increase in purchasing power. Money must be a store of value. This is, so this is one of the most important concepts. If you understand this drawing right here, you really, you get everything. And, and everything starts to become very clear and, and fall into, into clear view. It's like you're putting the right glasses on for the first time. Money must be a store of value on top of being fungible, durable, portable, divisible, a medium of exchange, and a unit of account. I only want to trade my finite time for finite assets. I do not trade my finite time for infinite pieces of paper or digits on a computer. That would be the worst trade ever. I'd be the worst investor of my time and energy ever. Make an equal trade for yourself. Make the fair trade for yourself. So we're gonna streamline this. Just again, a little example here to finish out. The top things any person looking to be wealthy must know to help them get ahead on an inflationary fiat standard we live in now. Leverage, cash flow, hedging, compound interest, Tax reduction, velocity of, of money or velocity of currency, risk management, rules, laws, regulations, a lot of stuff going on. And there's many more too. However, what do you need to know on a deflationary hard money Bitcoin standard? You only need to know one thing, how to save. That's it, how to save. 
because we have an equity money now, truly saving capital, an equity money. Because right now, people, some people are decently good at saving, and most people are taught to do that in their entire life. However, they're saving a liability. They're saving dollars that are depreciating, so they're getting poor over time. Now, you can actually, the, the, the homeless person, the, the couple that's 85 years old, the person in Nigeria, it doesn't matter where on earth, or what your social class, your gender, it doesn't matter. You can save in the hardest asset, hardest money ever known to man and get ahead in the coming years, every year into perpetuity and pass it down to your children and become wealthier over time because it's the finite bucket we are talking about, the perfect finite bucket for your finite time. This, these fiat currencies continually get devalued. So there's more, more and more of these units over time, meaning there's less value. Well, there's less and less Bitcoin around over time. So each Satoshi you have, each Bitcoin gets more and more valuable because there's less Bitcoin or less Satoshis. So it gets more and more valuable. It's the opposite of what we're living in now. It's a deflationary world instead of an inflationary world, which lends to a question we will do in a future video and blog where will money even exist in the future when we have cheap and abundant energy and food everywhere and we've got Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the first couple of levels already established and, and good for the world in 50 years, 100 years, will money even be a thing? Will we even need it when things are so abundant and so cheap? And we've, we've crossed that Rubicon, that, that sentient, you know, gone from the type, what is it, type zero to type one civilization. That's the question. That's what Bitcoin has the, has the ability to do. We've seen fiat doesn't work. The world's crumbling. We've seen gold and silver doesn't, don't work. I used to think those things were both going to work. Fiat or gold and silver and just need to fight politics and, and, you know, vote the right guy in or we just need a gold standard or silver. Well, guess what? We've tried all these things. We've tried voting in the right people. We've tried gold and silver for thousands of years. None of that's worked. Doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result is insanity. A lot simpler to be in a Bitcoin standard and just understand how to save. Be great at what you do and save more than you spend each month. Pretty simple. Sounds, uh, sounds like something we've grown up with before, right? Well, now we can actually do it. A lot more streamlined. With Bitcoin aligns incentives, period. That's the beauty. This has been happening for over 100 years. I'm gonna come back to this quote here in a second. Many people ask, why don't I know about this? Think about it for a second. If I'm a government that wants control over its citizens, and again, there's another article we're gonna have coming soon too. You need your collectivist glasses on. You need your communist, collectivist, Fabianist, Marxist, whatever you wanna call it, glasses on to be able to see clearly. To be able to see what's going on, most people can't see what's going on because they don't have the right glasses on. They think in like logic or emotion, they don't know what's going on. But if you put your, your Marxist glasses on, your collectivist glasses, the world comes into great clarity. We can, we can see what's going on. And governments are there to continually try to grow themselves. Right, so think about it. If I'm a government that wants to control over citizens, why would I train them to become thinkers and doers? Wouldn't I train them to stay home and live off the dole and be a drain on society instead of a producer? Study the Rockefeller General Education Board starting in 1902, and I believe it came out in 1903 officially, and the subsequent organizations that have sprung up to carry the water and amplify the narrative. The Council on Foreign Relations turned into the United Nations, Federal Reserve, NATO, International Monetary Fund, World Bank, Bank of International Settlements, the Tavistock Institute, the World Economic Forum, the Club of Rome, the Royal Institute for International Affairs, among many others. The CIA has been one of the biggest organizations in coordinating much of the censorship and narrative control of the global population with the British government. Do your own research. Trust but verify. Stay strong. This is freedom advice, not financial advice. I appreciate you coming to my TED Talk. Oh, and we forgot this. Here's the Rockefeller quote. I don't want a nation of thinkers. I want a nation of workers. John D. Rockefeller created the General Education Board in the early 1900s to dispense Rockefeller funds to education. We are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis. Does that sound familiar? And the nations will accept the new world order, David Rockefeller. And I would have suggest everyone says and talks about the one world government, not new world order, not new world order. That could be a wrestling thing, right? It's a one world government. These people want one world government. That's the plan. It's been a hundred plus years. So I appreciate you guys coming to my TED talk. Please share it out. Please share it out because the algorithm hates truth and question everything of boldness, even the existence of God himself. So I appreciate you being here and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Link to the blog is in the description. See you soon.